So today's topic, go global with YouTube. Before we start, I would love to um, share um, a little bit more about the current scale our YouTube platform is currently operating. So um, what does this number tell us? Right. So in every minute as we speak, there are more than 500 hours of videos being uploaded every minute. 500 plus videos, right? Hours of videos, actually. So that's a lot of content. And currently we are operating and um, people can reach us from 100 different countries. And our platform also currently support more than 80 uh, localized languages. So what does this number tell us and why do we actually start with all these numbers? I would love to encourage all of you to think about these numbers this way. So let's try to divide these into two different groups, the supply group and the demand group. And what do I mean by this? So all of you um, joining us today are most likely going to be the YouTube creators or YouTube partners who are planning to be the suppliers of the content to the platform. So with more than 500 hours plus of videos being uploaded every minute, how can you remain competitive? Uh, how can you become users number one choice for them to actually click and start watching your videos, right? And in terms of the demand, so we have a lot of users, we have a lot of fans out there who are really, really interested in consuming your content. And these group of people are not just limited in your own countries. So we have the global audience um, who are able to actually discover and reach your content. So of course, these different peoples are speaking different languages. Um, and you know, like uh, a lot of content being produced nowadays doesn't really have the language uh, limitations. For example, music, right? Like everyone, I do not really understand Korean language, but I still listen to some of the same goes for Chinese music. So how can we actually remove such barrier to make sure that um, the users are able to consume your content um, a little bit more effectively, right? So going back to our agenda today, um, so we would love to do two different things with you. Firstly, we would love to make sure that you have the right strategies to expand internationally, right? Uh, what are some of the uh, considerations that you have to think through to make sure that you are implementing uh, translation features at the right video, all right? And secondly, uh, after this training, we would also really hope that uh, you would be able to go back and start adopting some of these translation features that we have. Right. And for today, um, I would love to call our learning approach 360 interactive learning approach. And what do I mean by this? Why 360? So as I check, you know, there are quite a lot of participants right here. Some of you might be the operations manager. The other of you might be the data analyst, while quite a few people might also be helping with uh, day to day with the content uh, creative. So how can I tailor this session to everyone? So good news, uh, we would always have some sections uh, uh, relevant to you here. So we would start off by uh, sharing with you some of the content strategies. So at least the marketing team or the content creative team can also like uh, start thinking critically how they can lay out the strategies that would allow them to expand internationally. internationally. Secondly, for those ops manager, we would also like love to make sure that you know how to adopt this product directly. And of course, um, to make sure this is um, as easy and as interactive for you, I'll actually be doing a product demo on my very own channel. And thirdly, uh, we would also be learning how we can leverage the automatic captioning, what are some of the key considerations, and then we would end our presentation by telling those data analysts out there uh, to make sure that you know, like you have the right tools, uh, you have the right success metrics to go back and start monitoring um, after you have implemented these features. So again, why is this feature important? 
well for quite a lot of reasons firstly you know like um youtube is actually the second largest uh search engine globally and i'm sure you can guess the first one that's google so um to make sure that uh, your content um, is discoverable for everyone we would also be we should also be uh, incorporating the translation features so that we can have that uptick in that search and suggest that video traffic source secondly we should also be looking at how we can expand to the new market right a lot of people have been focusing on gaining that 10 million subscribers how can you become the first um, creator slash partner to like hit that uh, diamond button here uh, we could also try to think about diversifying our audiences by in expanding internationally uh, besides the subscription uh, we would also be able to benefit from the watch time increase as well thirdly um, we know that like you're joining from a lot of countries today so wherever your home country is the potential for an audience out there is probably going to be a lot bigger right so for example um, if you had a singapore or malaysia based company there might be a demand for people out there in Thailand. So how can we actually interact and attract those uh, Thai audience a little bit better? And fourthly, um, we would also love to ensure that your content can be consumed by everyone. By increasing the accessibility of the deaf, the hard of hearing, the non-native speakers, or the viewers in the Lao environment, right? So one of the interesting users inside I got was that, oh, how can YouTube actually, you know, like uh, make the subtitle a little bit more prominent? Because when I'm commuting using the bus, using the train, when I'm going uh, to work, um, you know, like uh, this would be a very helpful feature when I actually forget my headphones. So yeah, that also improved, uh, this also like improved the user experience in that uh, regard as well. And lastly, and most importantly, the money. Right. So uh, being in Southeast Asia, a lot of times our CPM or cost per impressions tend to be lower uh, than a lot of other international markets, let's say like Australia, the United States. So um, by making your audience broader and being able to attract more um, higher CPM uh, audiences, you would also benefit from higher partner ads revenue because uh, most likely in Australia, in the United States, uh, the ad uh, rate or the ad spending uh, market right there is actually a lot larger than here in Southeast Asia. So with these, all these benefits to highlight, let me start off by uh, going through the first section of our presentation, which is what are some of the strategies to expand internationally? Well, to start off my presentation, uh, I'm sure a lot of you are trying to look for, you know, like what are some of the secret recipes? What are some of the secret formula out there for you to be successfully going global, right? So let me start off this presentation by sharing you this very formula. So um, it all started with audience, everyone. So and this applies to any type of uh, strategies that you would have to implement on YouTube, try to think from the perspective of the viewers, right? And then what you can do is try to map or like create the journeys that would make them stay, that would make them like your content and stay there a little bit longer. So really like for content, uh, for, for the form uh, key success factors right here, I would love to break this down into two main parts discoverable content and engage viewers. So if I were to think from the perspective of the uh, audience, right? So let's say when I go to youtube.com, uh, I'm searching for cake, right? Um, a sweet tooth right here. So I'm trying to like find some formula to make a cake, right? So since I am originally Thai, I use the Thai search keyword. So how can you actually, how can you as the Malaysian a Singaporean creator make your content to like be surfaced prominently to me as the Thai user. Well, first you have to make your content discoverable, right? Uh, and you can do that by translating your own channel. 
So please make sure that any tags, channel name, playlist, video title, and descriptions that you have, you translate them into multiple languages that your the audience is coming from. And then secondly, once you have reached a user like Poon Sak from Thailand, and then I decided to click on your very own content, how can you actually make me stay? Right? How can I uh, become more engaged? Or how do I even get the content that you're trying to show to me? So to do so, you should also be translating your very own video, right? All the titles and descriptions, um, you know, like most likely how to make the cake resume. Uh, the recipe should also be available in, uh, at least in English or uh, in some of the top uh, country viewers that you have actually been able to reach. And then you should also prepare the subtitles to make sure that all the steps and instructions shared in the video are well understood by the audience. So now that we learn uh, the importance and what are some of the secret formulas of the translation tool, let me share with you a little bit further on how you can actually think about your content strategies. Right? What are some of the videos uh, you can actually start with? So first, you can think about the videos that are language diagnostic, meaning that the videos that um, you don't really have to speak much. And I'm sure you know, like if you are like me and you are like you love to see all those DIY videos, uh, you love to see like a, a lot of um, the food production or preparation processes, like Tasty Channel, for example those would be the good candidate uh, for you to, to translate because viewers just have to watch and they don't need a lot of cultural or language context over there. And then secondly, you could also try to think about using the content that is globally relevant, right? So for example, uh, COVID, right? This is um, most probably like most commonly searched term on top of everyone's mind right now. Uh, you can try to think like from the global perspective, uh, what could be the relevant content during this period of time? For example, uh, exercise video, right? Everyone is currently staying home. They cannot go to the gym. So uh, you might want to start uh, translating all these uh, step. What is burpees in Thai? You know, like how can you, how many rounds of like, push-ups you have to do, uh, all those uh, details should also be coming up as the subtitle. So uh, viewers from Thailand like me would be able to understand and follow. Thirdly, you should also be looking into what are some of the trending content. The tool that is uh, available for you to use is actually Google Trends, right? And let me sell Google product a little bit more right here. So if you go to trends.google.com, you have the functionalities to filter this down by different uh, country on the country level as well. So let's say I want to target, I know that I'm currently uh, a Singapore based uh, production house and I have a lot of Chinese uh, content um, that, you know, like I might be able to expand to the Chinese audiences. So um, to start with, uh, I just select China. And then I can also like try to see what are some of the recently trending content, Epic Games, Park Ji Hoon, uh, you know, like, so you would be able to also compare. So let's say, hmm, how, what should be the right naming uh, strategies for my title? Should I write COVID-19 or should I write full coronavirus, right? So uh, to see the user's response to this, you can also just Corona virus, right? You can also like try to compare different search keyword. And here you can see that the word coronavirus are actually searched more often than the term COVID-19. So maybe like now if you're the news creators or if you're the news publishers, you can also like go back and start looking at your metadata strategy. If most of your content are listed as COVID-19 or is it actually written in full coronavirus? So yeah, this is also another tool that you can come play around with um, to check uh, the user's demand. And fourth, uh, if you are the niche YouTube creators or um, you're tailoring like the videos to specific uh, audiences, uh, one example I can think of right here is 
right now I'm really passionate also about the perfume. So, and I find that in Thailand, there are not so many channels out there who specialize on this area. So I start to look and search uh, for this topic a little bit more often. And I, I do have quite a few of my favorite uh, YouTube channels on this. So if you're interested, feel free to post that in the question section as well. And fifth, um, how can you make the content more discoverable? So uh, to check the trends, right? Like what you can do is you can go back to your YouTube analytics too and try to understand what are some of the videos that perform really well on search and suggested traffic source. And six, uh, you can also try to identify what are some of the evergreen content, or I would love to name this the classic uh, content, the content that not, never really dies, right? For example, if you are uh, creating a content on how to make a tie knot perfectly, you know, like since we have a lot of uh, new graduates uh, from the university every year, and this content would always be in high demand. So uh, you could also consider prioritizing adding the subtitle or metadata localization over that. Seventh, uh, series type of content. And the secret about the series is that, you know, like once you launch different episodes, uh, users who really enjoy the first few episodes would tend to follow, right? So uh, once you have unlocked, let's say if you have like the 10 episodes, uh, of the series content. And if your first two or three sections are hit, most likely you would be able to contain, uh, to retain the remaining of uh, the audience to finish um, the rest of the season, uh, the rest of the episodes. So again, like this is also another recommended content type that you can uh, start implementing translation features on. And eight, of course, everyone search for fresh new and trendy content. So if you have any uh, content that is new, uh, that is trendy right now, it's also like worth uh, updating um, the localization features uh, on your channel as well. So now from the user's perspective, what are some of the things that they would actually see? All right, so uh, one example we have right here is from Vsauce Human uh, Extinction. So once you search in English, uh, your content would also show the English metadata, human extinction. And this is how the subtitle looks like. Uh, it shows as well in English. So on the right hand side, you would be able to see the localized version, right? So let's say if you're the Spanish um, creator and you started to search uh, using the Spanish search keywords, Luckily, this creator Vsauce has already added uh, the localization feature as well as the subtitles right there. So the Spanish um, creators, the Spanish viewers would be able to follow along the content uh, accordingly, and they would be able to select that Spanish uh, subtitle to enjoy watching that content. The same goes for Chinese subtitle and also French subtitle as well. So let's take a look at another example. So again, we have Matt about Lego right here. So what happened is uh, they have, once they launched the video, they have also added the localized titles and description for a group of dialogue free videos in the five largest viewership languages that they have, right? So what they do is they go to YouTube analytics and try to understand their audience demographic. And then they spot that, oh, there are actually quite a lot of Thai, Vietnamese, and Indonesian viewers watch time over there. So I might as well try to attract uh, those audiences a little bit better by localizing those content. So let's say you don't have that production uh, budget to fully localize and dub the content. What you can do is you can add that title and you can also add that subtitle on your videos. So from here, uh, 120 days post the launch date, the channel are able to uh, attract a lot of international audiences. The channel actually grew the watch time by 30% and the individual language growth uh, is actually like five to 15 X the viewership. And um, aside from that, uh, they have also uh, spotted that uh, from the entire viewership, 
33% um, are actually coming from um, the translated views. So that's a huge success, right? Like one third are actually watching the subtitle. So now that we know what type of content uh, we could be targeting translation features with, let's switch gears and um, try to understand how you can actually uh, play around with this feature a little bit better. All right. So right here, I am going to be opening my YouTube channel. So yes, I only have three subscribers. How sad I cannot even monetize, but that's not limiting me from enabling the translation features. So what we would do and what we would cover today is we would go on, you know, like how can you click uh, to reach the title? How can you also add that uh, subtitle on your videos, right? So uh, for those of you who have a laptop um, open, you might want to go to studio.youtube.com and play around with me. All right. So what I would love to do is I first go to the subtitle tab, right? So let's say I actually just created uh, some membership training welcome video right here. And it's actually in English right now. And as you can see, um, the original language shows membership training welcome video. Now I know that I am Thai and probably like I could force a lot of my friends to subscribe from Thailand, but at least I should make an attempt to make them understand my content a little bit better. And with that channel strategy in mind, I would actually go to Thai language, right? I can just click on add language and then search for Thai, which is right here. So to translate the metadata, all you have to do is you go to that title and description section and click on add. Right, so membership training welcome video. Again, this is Thai language 101. I would say membership video ต้อนรับ membership. Right, so I can just simply add the translated uh, Thai version right here and then I click on publish. The same goes for the description. Uh, you can also translate everything like what's your uh, social media presence. Um, you would be able to like uh, translate that as well. And right here, uh, since I know that maybe um, some deaf audiences might be following this, uh, what I can do is I can try to play my content. So I just say, hi everyone, welcome to Poon Sucks channel membership training. All I have to do is I just have, uh, this is already pre-typed. So I can try to match uh, the video title uh, and then I can type the word, right? So hi everyone, welcome to Poon Sucks membership. Punsak, you've been muted. All right. I hope that's not the signal that my training is not. It happened again, so maybe it is a sign. All right. Seems like someone was trying to mute me. And it's the same person. So hopefully that's just one person opinion. But yeah, let's go back um, to my screen right here. So yeah, um, previously I was mentioning how we can add the subtitle in different languages. So for title, you can just click on add. And for subtitle, you could also, you know, like since I already have my English version added, uh, for my Thai version, I can just simply translate like this. So I did craft to click on in the turn up to can open channel membership, and then I just have to click on publish, right? So once you have published this, then you would be able to see that see like uh, all the 
so um, you would be able to see like the um, subtitle that you have added and from the user perspective they would also be able to select what type of languages um, they would love to see right here so thai or if they don't like um, any subtitle they can also choose to opt out so yes that's how you can actually implement um, or add the video title and description localization as well as add as many subtitles in different languages as you want all right so next um, let's take a look at what are some of the other youtube creators are doing right there right so here i'll just quickly show so this is the reaction video so i think like this creator is really smart you know like um the way where uh, since she doesn't know how to produce the content, what she can choose to do is uh, she actually uh, choose to react to some of the music videos, sports, movie releases. So um, yeah, what happened right here is um, this is the US based creator. And what she did is she tries to spot what are some of the trending international music videos, even though she understands zero of like the relics. But uh, what happened right here is 67% of the entire watch time and 54% uh, of all the comments are actually coming from different country, Brazil, right? So uh, this is actually a very smart move. Uh, you can identify uh, the content that is broadly appealing to the glo global audience, and then you can start uh, implementing the localization techniques by using some of the subtitles and localization of the metadata. Yes. Right. So let's take a look at the second example. So here we would also be able to see uh, the cultural related themes. So oops, the video is now private, but essentially like this video um, shows the um, travel in space. So, you know, like uh, this creator has launched um, this in um, a lot of countries. So it's originally a Mexican video, but the result has been quite um, impressive. So uh, th what this Mexican creator is trying to do is they localize all these local trends, all these news, um, and then they're trying to uh, create a better understanding of uh certain cultures and then try to advertise it into into the international stage so that's another thing that you can consider doing the third example right here is the language agnostic video again this is relevant for any animation unboxing DIYs, right so as you can see here all the content doesn't really require a lot of cultural understanding. So you can also um, think about how you can translate the metadata into different languages right here. So after the implementation of this strategy, um, Monica Toy channel has actually been able to diversify their viewership a lot. So as you can see here, uh, less than 50% are coming from Brazil, which is the home country. And then the rest are just from everywhere, from India, from Poland, Vietnam, uh, US, Argentina. So again, um, that's how you can leverage on the search strategies by translating a lot of uh, metadata into different languages. And then another example, um, especially like for those MCNs out there who are operating in different countries. Uh, once you plan for any international collaborations, uh, one thing we realize is um, that a lot of synergies happening right here, meaning that there might be quite a lot of similar audiences and interest. So this is also the opportunity for you to gain that subscriber from the other um, creators country. Um, you can also like highlight uh, different personalities just to make sure that uh, you can even have a broader um, wide broader wide of audiences and um, right here um, you can also ask your audience for suggestions 
And um, right now, you know, like since a lot of travels are banned, you can even consider using Google Hangouts and then like do Q&A across different creators. So for such examples, just to make sure that you reach as many people as you can, then you should also be um, implementing some of the localization um, of the metadata. So thirdly, you could also think about how you can use the automatic captionings, right? So I hear you very loud and clear right now. A lot of you might be thinking, hmm, this sounds like a lot of work for me. And you know, like what if I don't have that language expertise? I'm not Poonsak and I cannot speak Thai. How can I still, um, you know, like use this feature? So luckily we have this feature called like automatic captioning. What you could do is uh, you can rely on the YouTube uh, machine learning algorithm and then help rely on us to help you translate. But definitely there are quite uh, a few key considerations that you have to think through here. So first, uh, you should also be asking yourself, are the videos in the supported language for automatic captionings? Right now we have uh, supported languages for English, Dutch, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Portuguese, Russian, and Spanish. So um, the relevant APAC languages would probably be English, Japanese, and Korean right here. So if your creators are from those countries and you don't have the bandwidth to translate them, you could consider using the automatic captionings. Secondly, you should also be asking yourself, is your content free from any mispronunciations? Do they have any accent, dialects, or background noise, right? So as much as we're trying to advance and perfect our uh, YouTube algorithm, um, there might be a chance that our algorithm still make mistakes, right? For example, they might not be able to understand the dialect. So, uh, what you should do is, especially for sensitive content, uh, if you realize that you would be switching languages uh, instantly, or if you're planning to use a lot of dialect, then um, please defer from using uh, automatic captionings and rather uh, translate them yourself just to make sure you have a better quality control over those content. Uh, content is in language let's say like if your content is Korean and then the content itself is not as um, complicated. Um, it only has a few um, speaking narration narratives, then you should also consider implementing automatic captionings right here. So lastly, for those data analysts out there, this track is for you. How can you actually track um, your performance using YouTube analytics? Right, so let's do some quick exercise together, everyone. So let's say after you implemented the subtitle or uh, metadata localization, I have actually hinted quite a lot of metrics we can track and monitor here. Uh, can anyone of you remember uh, what are those? Or do you have any suggestion on, hmm, maybe my boss would love to know the subscribers growth from the other country where we implement subtitle. Can we ping the group chat here if you have any suggestions? Silent. <laughs> can you go back to the presentation screen? Oh yes, definitely. Yeah, I'm trying to see if there's any response from the chat room. Okay, video views, yes, from that country, that's correct. Video views from that country. Any other suggestion? Subscribers. Subscribers. Yes. All right, please take note of this user. If we have any swag and if we ever meet in person, we owe you our YouTube swag. I think Swami is our longtime technical guru on all things YouTube. I wow. 
I'm sure he has a lot of swag from us already then. Hi, Gina. <laughs> yes. All right, since we have quite a few shy audiences right here, let me then jump to the uh, solution mode. Let me change the color so you can see uh, how I bracket. And let's say tomorrow I have to go back and present to my management team on the translation success that we have been implementing in the company. I might think about the way I pivot this into three different brackets, right? User engagement, reach, and revenue. In terms of user engagement, I might see like the viewership from translation, OSCs, watch hour, comments. Uh, and in terms of reach, you can also like try to see um, if there's any increase in the subscribers. And for revenue, um, you could also like look at the overseas revenue since you're trying to diversify that from your home country. And then you could also take a look uh, as the indicative number uh, in the CPM. So everyone, uh, when we are referring to the revenue on YouTube, um, going back to our high school class, you know, like our math teacher would always teach us that revenue is actually equal to price times quantity, right? In the YouTube context, the price factor or what determines the expensiveness uh, of the, or, or the rate of the content is actually from the CPM. And unfortunately, the people who are influencing these are the advertisers and not us directly. But what we could do is we can influence where the country of this CPM is coming from by using the translation features, right? So you could also like try to compare and contrast CPM across the uh, pre and post implementation of your uh, metadata translation, right? So to make sure that you know how to get this data directly, let me uh, show you the example of the Creator Insider. As much as I want to show my own uh, from my own channel, but since I only have three subscribers and zero viewership, uh, I thought it might be better to show um, some of the YouTube um, channels that have a little bit more insights. So uh, if you go to your um, analytics tab, and then you click on see more, you would be able to see this granular level of um, YouTube analytics. And all you have to do is click on the translation use right here, right? So once you click on the translation use, you would be able to identify what's the percentage of viewership coming from the translated metadata top, uh, or subtitle versus from the original language itself. Right, so let's say I start implementing these uh, starting in May, and then I would love to see if there's any uh, significant change uh, from April. So let's say April, I haven't really implemented these. May is when I start, maybe like April and May is not a good example because you're not comparing Apple to Apple, right? We have already completed April, but not yet May. So what I would love to do is maybe I'll compare March to April, right? So let's say like if you are start implementing the subtitle on the beginning of April, then you can compare that with March like, oh, seems like in March, uh, we are able to attract around 9.1% of all the viewership in. And uh, this time in April, I would only have 5.4%. Hmm. Uh, do I prioritize on the right video? Uh, what type of videos do I implement in March to make sure that there's such a high demand and uplift? So you can try to like uh, compare and contrast and then monitor your performance accordingly, right? Or secondly, you could also try to see the overseas subscribers. So what I would do is you can also go to geography and then let's try to see like, okay, let's say majority of the viewers come from uh, United States, uh, then or like India, then you can also like try to compare and contrast if there's any difference in the um, targeted countries that you have implemented your subtitle. Let's say, hmm, I have actually added the Bahasa uh, Indonesian 
creator right there. And um, this only happens in, um, I only implement these for March. So I see that the data is around like 4.4% uh, of the subscribers are coming from Indonesia. But then in April, since we start to just work from home and I have less bandwidth to implement these, um, the number of subscriber contribution actually goes down to like 2.5%. So you would also be able to follow up um, on different um, metadata strategies that you have localized and then track it directly from um, here as well, right? The same goes for watch time. Uh, you would be able to see um you can go to geography um tab and then try to also compare and contrast uh, the contribution um of the content um from left to right table by table comparison as well all right so it seems like we have around 10 minutes left and i would love to open the floor for q and a as well the last slide here talks about the recap on after you have learned this session, what are some of the homework that we hope you would go back and do. So first, try to use the translation features, localize both subtitle, uh, localize both title, description, and playlist to make sure that you're searchable. And then add that subtitle so that those who search for you would continue watching your content. Secondly, for those who are uh, having less bandwidth, you might check for two things. First, if your um, content is in supported languages. Second, if the content is less sensitive and doesn't contain any mispronunciations, background noise, or dialect, then you should be good to go to use the automatic captionings. And then try to reflect back on a lot of examples that we have shared with you today. Try to check for the video with broad appeals, check if there's any way you can explore the regional or global news or cultural specific content to make sure that it's niche enough for people to search for that. And then if you have any international collaborations, also don't forget to add that uh, metadata localization as well. With that, I would hand over back to Gina to see if you have any questions we can address. Hi, everyone. So can you see my screen? I'll stop presenting as well. Um, so I just started presenting the questions that were collected during the call. So to give Punsak a little bit of a break, um, I will start question. So uh, from Jovan, we have a first question saying, so we have multiple versions of our titles for various languages. Yes. Uh, so that is correct. Usually, uh, perception and the languages and what your YouTube.com language settings are. If you, as a video owner, input you know one in Thai, one in Korean, one in Japanese, one in English for the same video, the different users for different languages will then be able to see numerous link titles. Second question. Uh, translating videos, how would it affect the rights of the content owners? For example, original video audio is English. Another user uses it to do a different audio language translation like Chinese, Spanish, etc. So I actually think this might be a question from one of our content ID users um, uh, that, that may be on this call. So actually, our content ID systems track and protect content regardless of, I believe, the audio. So if the visual is matching, then there shouldn't be a problem with language-specific claims. Pablo, do you want to take on the next question? Translating videos. How would it affect the rights of the content owners? Oh, you moved. <laughs> oh, we already did that question. <laughs> Wait, there's one. Before. OK, someone added that one. Uh, can we turn off the automated translation? Yes, you can. Then, uh, yeah. Will the languages for automatic captioning be expanded to Tagalog, Thai, Malay, etc.? 
Actually, I am not as close to the product, so maybe Pumsak has a better updated sense of which languages are available for auto captioning. For auto captioning, unfortunately, um, it's only available in Japanese, uh, Korean, and English right now for APAC languages. Um, for the other languages, though, you would be able to self translate that directly from the first product walkthrough section that we go through together. So, yes, a little bit of manual work, but the more input we have, the more we would be able to train our algorithm so that hopefully we would, we would be able to launch uh, auto captionings in much broader languages. But we just need a little bit more input from you guys to, to train the algorithm. Uh, and next question, can we activate translation for already uploaded videos? Absolutely. All you have to go uh, and do is um, go to your creator studio um, and check your video and you will have the option to insert different languages for that video. Do we have other questions on the chat or, oh, actually the most popular question is usually, will you share the presentation afterwards? Unfortunately, we will not be sharing the PDF files of the presentation. So we hope that you have been taking lots of notes. And one, one reminder here is that Please, please do not share the, if you are screen capturing this um, presentation um, it, on YouTube, because this is a, a session that is shared with everyone over webinars, and we would like to make sure that there are no video files running around in YouTube overall for this session. So please do not re-upload this training. Yes, um, so in terms of the available resources, uh, I believe we have one dedicated track for uh, translation feature in Creator Academy. So let me ping you the link via the chat so that you can also go back and try to uh, learn a little bit more examples from there, or you can have the reference point to check back when, when you need to. Great. I think Ray asked a question. I've got captions that I translate myself published. Is there any way to automatically translate them rather than using automatic captioning? Hmm. I believe there is no automatic um, way to translate existing subtitles. Punsak, um, is there a solution that you know of? So that's actually like an option to upload the pre-generated like SRT file. So I think um, in terms of translating that file into multiple languages, if you have like, um, it, there's currently no YouTube in product solutions that help with that, but you might wanna also like check if there's any API or if you can run a script to auto translate that using the um, Google Translate mechanism uh, offline before ingesting it back to, to the system, that should also be possible. But unfortunately, um, I think in usual product itself, there's, there's no auto translation feature as of now yet. Great. Is one... it also... Ooh, yes, go ahead, Pablo. Yeah, there's one here. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If, uh, is it also effective to translate song lyrics? Um, a person that you might know at Google is a big, big fan of Korean music. The first time I got exposed to Korean music was on a video that had, uh, that, you know, was translated. So I think it is very useful and it can help you reach new audiences. Um, do we have any more new questions? I think that's it, right? Or, yes, perfect. Well, this is good timing. Um, I believe Punsak has prepared a feedback form which I am pinging in this webinar chat group. Uh, to wrap the session up, if everyone could go to that link and share with us your feedback, that would be wonderful. We are continuing to make sure we can improve these sessions. So I will hand it over to Punsok to wrap up the session. Sounds good. All right, before I go back to the PSAT response form, um, in the QR code format, uh, I would love to take a minute to also share with you on some of the other lessons that are coming up soon. So we have two courses coming up. 
Firstly, maximizing the power of promotion on YouTube for artists and music labels. So if you are artists and music labels or know someone who would be interested, don't forget to let them register and tune in. And uh, for the data geek out there, we would also have another measuring your performance with YouTube analytics. So um, for a lot of questions that your management team is interested in knowing more, and you would love to see where you can pull that from YouTube analytics, this is the course that you cannot miss. All right, and again, um, we would also love to mark your attendance and also get as many feedback as possible. So for those of you who have been asking, hmm,